Pamela Boudreau went missing in 1986. Stories spread about what happened, but she was never found until last year when a distant relative helped identify her remains. But the case remains raised questions, and in tonight's Katie Moore investigation, we look for answers. The sugar cane, it whispers when the wind blows down the bayou. The wind pushes the canes like a secret spreading after it's told. Like the lady told me, you don't talk about that. Decades after a young woman disappeared in Lafouche Parish, the Paula Ann Boudreaux was reported missing. I say we have people of interest that we've identified. You let things, you, you let it lay. You, you don't wake things up that don't need to be woken up because then you wake up their own people and they put you to sleep. Everybody talks about it, you know, kind of a rumor, but a rumor down here, you know, is pretty much the truth. She just vanished. There was a boot club fair, blessed are booth going on in Golden Meadow. By Lafouche passed right in front of the church in the center, so I'm sure the parade of boats went by and got blessed people would be alongside the, uh, alongside the bayou. That night, 22-year-old Paula Boudreaux decided she had enough of the festival and headed back to her parents' home around 10.30. It would be the last time anyone saw her alive. Four days later, her sister Sue reported her missing to the Lafouche Parish Sheriff's Office in Galliano. 37 years of rumors. Eventually, we got heated and she was murdered. Swirling around Lafouche Parish about what happened to Paula. Paula was lured. Paula was buried underneath her dad's cement. Paula was fed to alligators. Went to the Golden Meadow, all hopped up on drugs and confessed. But it took the work of a distant relative who was working on her family tree to connect those dots and make the biggest break in the case in nearly 30 years. And I see that there is a missing sister, which is right here from Golden Meadow. Never heard of it. I've never heard Paula Boudreaux's name in my life. I'm born and raised here. Michelle Schwest asked us not to show her face for safety reasons. She says her tires have been slashed and she's received threatening phone calls since she started asking questions about what happened to Paula. I just couldn't leave it be. It, it consumed me. What started with a few calls to the Golden Meadow Town Hall led Michelle and a friend to speak with dozens of others on the phone through Facebook and Ancestry.com to try and find Paula. Many of the stories they heard ended with Paula's body dismembered. Packed her up, brought her on the other side of New Orleans following the railroad tracks through Highway 90 inside out. We followed that same route, crossing the tracks in Slidell when the road went straight, leading into the Piney Swamp off Thompson Road. For more than 30 years, investigators never connected the dots between this land and the woman's body found here by hunters in 1989 to the stories about Paula. So you and a friend just started searching missing, missing persons reports on the internet? Jane Doe's, yes. The remains found off Bayou Paquette Road were sent straight to LSU's Faces Lab. Then it was a new forensic anthropology program started by Mary Mannheim to help law enforcement identify human remains. Mary Mannheim had actually gone to the scene and collected the, uh, the skeleton and they did a grid search and found some other evidence at the scene and all of that was taken back to the FACES lab for curation. The cause and manner of death have always been undetermined, but a profile on the FBI's National Missing and Unidentified Persons System said the remains found in St. Tammany in 1989 had hands or limbs missing, what Schwest had heard over and over about what the killers did to Paula's body. And in 2013, the FACES lab created this rendering of what the woman may have looked like. When Schwest saw that rendering online last year. When I had to stop, I had to catch my breath, and I just cried. Like, I cried. What are we going to do? They emailed the Faces Lab, a tip that led the St. Tammany coroner to compare the DNA of Paula's relatives to the remains. And in January, Schwest learned she was right. I had no words, none at all. Um, I 
my knees hit the floor. My heart was pounding. Um, she was somebody then. A great sigh of relief, finally, to know that their sister's been located. These are 17 to the pound shrimp. We first heard the stories about what allegedly happened to Paula from her brother, Van Boudreau, over boiled shrimp on one of our trips down to Lafouche. What's that done to you? I mean, you haven't known what happened to your sister for that many years. Well, you always put it in the back of your mind. And, you know, you just kind of don't want to think about it for a while. You go lose yourself. Van says Paula had been seeing a married man whose wife was known to have a bad temper. A witness recently told the Lafouche Parish Sheriff that a few nights before Paula disappeared, the wife was looking for Paula while holding a cane knife, a kind of machete. Really where we seem to be today and probably where it would have been 37 years ago, is that this is more of a love triangle. The stories have said that the husband went to the Golden Meadow Police Department a few days after Paula disappeared and confessed to the town secretary, who both wrote down and taped his recorded statement. He allegedly said his wife killed Paula, then they dismembered her body and took it to Slidell. But like Paula's remains, that confession went missing. Have you all heard about a confession? Have you seen a confession anywhere? We have not seen a confession in writing. Uh, we did receive information that a confession was made and that there was a tape, an audio tape. Around the time Paula went missing, allegations of corruption in the Lafouche Sheriff's Office ran deep. And everybody knows what they were doing in this bayou. It's not a secret. They were running drugs. Murder, say those critics, is the easiest crime to get away with in the South Louisiana coastal parish. In 1989, Channel 4's legendary investigative reporter Bill Elder aired an in-depth story on similar allegations that featured former Sheriff Duffy Bro. It's very cheap for people to say, well, this happens and this happens, you know. But you bring me any kind of evidence that is true. I'm not immune to prosecution. Bro and some of his top deputies would later plead guilty to federal corruption charges. But that culture of corruption led many to speculate that Lafouche Sheriff's deputies got rid of the confession after Golden Meadow handed it over to them. Sheriff Weber says he has seen no evidence of that. If people thought that, you know, there were these corrupt cops involved, do you think that that hindered the investigation? I don't think that was a big factor as much as there was no body. As they finish their investigation more than 30 years in the making, they hope her remains will help tell them if more of the rumors are true. I know that it it brings me a lot of a lot of satisfaction knowing that she she means something now. She's not just forgotten about. Thanks to Michelle and her friend, Paula Boudreaux's life is no longer a whisper about how she went missing. It's a real investigation into who cut it short in the end. Katie Moore, Eyewitness News. The Lafouche Sheriff's Office talked with people of interest in the murder, and Weber says he would need evidence of corruption on the part of former deputies in order to investigate it.